in this class we will discuss the parity violation in beta dna and this is who and she is the main one among that experiment to prove that parity is violated in beta dna this thing we have already discussed the concept of Li and Yang. Parity is not conserved in beta D. In last lecture, we have mentioned about the tau theta fossil. This theta and tau are particles with the identical spin masses, lifetimes, etc. So this suggested that they were the same particle but their decays are leading them to different final states or uh, final states of different parities and our decays are governed by process similar to beta decay that means weak interactions so that is why Lee and Yang suggested that theta and tau were the same particle called the k meson which could decay into final states of differing parities if the parity operation were not an invariant process in beta so there were uh, so many attempts to prove this but it was in 1956 this uh, near 1960s this Wu and her co-workers succeeded. Several experimental groups set out to set the suggestion of Li and Yang. A successful experiment was done by C.S. Wu and her co-workers using the beta decay of cobalt-60. First, we will discuss the experimental setup and the result. Then uh, we will discuss how using this experiment we can say that parity is violated. They aligned the cobalt-60 spins by aligning their magnetic dipole moments in a magnetic field at a very low temperatures. That means temperatures of the order of 0 0.01 Kelvin low enough so that thermal motion would not destroy the alignment. Reversing the magnetic field direction reversed the spins and in effect accomplished the reflection. If beta particles would have been observed in equal numbers along and opposite to, to the magnetic field, then beta decay would have been invariant with respect to the parity variation. What was observed in fact was that at least 70% of the beta particles a piece extra here beta particles were emitted opposite to the nuclear spin so we are always finding that almost 70 percent of beta particles are emitted opposite to nuclear spin so this is the experimental set this is your sample cobalt 60 source and it is kept in a evacuated tube. This is the detector for your electrons. And also gamma is emitted with this. For that you have the gamma detectors. So actually what you are doing is here you are keeping the sample. In So, when it is placed in a strong external magnetic field and temperature is also low, so if this is the direction, you can see that spins are aligned in this direction.
then you can see that this is the gamma detectors gamma anisotropy a and b so one is placed here the other that means at the equatorial and the axial points if you see this is that of a and this is that of b so here you can see that here the number is actually low in this b and always it is uh, gamma rays are almost emitted perpendicular to the direction and what we have done is first you will place it here so you can't uh, you can't uh, get the gamma decay to this side of uh, electrons to this side because here it is in the this will absorb them so only to this direction we can get it so if this is the direction of magnetic field that means this one we are saying that initially the number of beta particles are very slow or very low less and after some time you are observing that it is reaching a constant value that means the reason for this act this is that initially the number is low but as time lags that means nearly 8 minutes due to some thermal agitations the alignment of cobalt is broken that is why it is a uniform band. so from this you can see that the number of particles emitted in this direction is comparatively somewhat low. This is the actual case. The number of particles emitted is low. Then we are reversing this direction. That means to this direction. So spins will also will be in the same direction. And now we are observing or we are uh, we want to measure the beta particles emitted to the same direction so actually when you consider this first case beta is emitted this direction and also to this direction we are only measuring this direction so what will be the number uh, ejected in the opposite direction actually that you are observing by reversing this magnetic field so when reversing this magnetic field actually you can consider it as a reverse case that means this is opposite direction so to the direction opposite to that of spin and the magnetic field you can see that more number of particles are emitted the number is large So, this is a proof for your parity violation. That means more number of particles are emitted opposite to the direction of spin. It is always like that. And Actually, the uh, uh, actually your spin is not varying uh, is a variable quantity in parity, but the direction in which a particle is moving actually it is a variable quantity. If uh, in the actual world a particle is moving in the upward direction, by the parity mirror it should move downwards. That we have already seen in the last lecture. So. Actually, this is the case. The first thing we have mentioned. This is the direction of magnetic field. So, electrons are more emitted in the direction opposite to that. So, this is the case if parity is obeyed. We know that there is no change in the direction of magnetic field. But, 
the direction is if this is the direction of motion in the parity mirror it should be in the opposite direction so this should be the case that means when you are reversing the magnetic field that means if uh, in the initial case more number of particles were emitted opposed to the direction of magnetic field in the parity changing condition it must be in the direction of magnetic field so the number that should that you should get must be same in both cases but this is what you are getting that means magnetic field this is the direction so in the second case you can see that magnetic field is reversed so this is the direction opposite to that when this is reversed this is opposite direction there you are getting that means uh, you must reverse to see the thing so it is always the electrons are emitted opposite to the spin here we are me measuring a direction in the same direction of magnetic field and now it is reversed in the opposite direction in the opposite direction you are getting a maximum that means there is a difference between in the direction and the opposite direction and this difference is mainly or is it is due to your violation of parity so here the spins are act, uh, exactly aligned so after some time due to the thermal agitation that alignment is broken so there will be a random motion and when a random one you are getting the same thing so here uh, once again you can see this this is actually we are getting so this shows a violation and if parity is conserved it should be like this that we have already mentioned in the last two lectures direction of magnetic field is not changing and if this is the direction of motion of electrons in the parity mirror it should be in the upward direction but this is we are getting that means direction of magnetic field and direction of emission are always opposite and this is a remarkable experiment and I think it was done some uh, 50 to 60 years back and later with the more sophisticated equipments the experiment was repeated after some 30 years and again they got a very good result and that's all Thank you.